Mumbai is the undisputed financial and industrial hub of India. Known as the city that never sleeps, it's home to 23 million people, making it the sixth most populous metropolitan area in the world. Previously known as Bombay, it's built on seven islands and is a historic site that's full of culture and art. It's also home to the Indian film industry, Bollywood, known worldwide for its vibrant movies and musical numbers. Looking at the city from a distance, you'll see its remarkable skyline with towering buildings, almost reminiscent of the world-famous Manhattan in New York. But like Manhattan and other busy cities, it has the same problem traffic. Most of the largest companies are situated in Mumbai, causing an influx of people from the rural and less developed cities. It also boosts several prestigious universities and schools, attracting many students and young minds to try their luck in Mumbai. With the added stress of supporting such a number, the city can hardly breathe. Problems associated with overcrowding, including poor sanitation, low quality housing, and traffic congestion. It has one of the world's worst road traffic, ranked as the fifth most congested city. So during peak hours, a 30 minute trip can take an additional 20 minutes longer. It's estimated that Mumbai suffers an economic loss of INR 410 billion due to traffic jams, with 121 hours lost yearly. As the Indian economy continues to bloom, its reflection can be seen on the roads. Over the years, the number of privately owned vehicles has increased in Mumbai by 6%. This means that the city has 4.1 million vehicles on the road, translating to 600 cars per kilometer. This is the highest number anywhere in India. For those who can't own cars, they take public transport. The city's suburban railways overburden, ferrying up to 8 million people daily. Meanwhile, the municipal bus service struggles to remain financially viable with millions of rupees in liability. A lack of a well-established metro network exacerbates this. The space taken for the metro's ongoing construction has reduced the number of lanes on the road to two or three on average in some parts of the city. To relieve some of the burden from Mumbai's roads, the government is planning to build a coastal road along the Arabian Sea. But it's not just having a road above the sea that makes it interesting. A section of it would be undersea too. This is the first undersea tunneling project in India. So how is the road going to transform the traffic landscape of Mumbai and how much time will it take to be completed? Stay with us till the end to find out. If you're new to this channel, then welcome to Visionary Builds. We bring the latest news in architecture from around the world. So hit the subscribe button to watch two videos weekly. Before we hop on to this new coastal development, it's important to understand the geography of Mumbai. Mumbai is set on a narrow peninsula surrounded by the Arabian Sea on all three sides. This gives Mumbai a somewhat vertical and narrow shape. Other cities in central India aren't limited by the sea and thus have a radical geometry. In such cities, the government builds ring roads to decrease traffic congestion on linear roads. Ring roads are an ingenious solution that provides cars and other vehicles an alternative route above ground, thereby reducing the load on the city's major arteries. However, given Mumbai's geographical position, it currently only has two major highways, the Eastern Express Highway and the Western Express Highway. The Eastern Express Highway starts from Thane and extends to Mumbai's far south. The Western Express Highway stretches from the suburb of Mira Road to Bandra. To reach the city south, one has to rely on a dense network of smaller roads. But with a new coastal road project, you can bypass the need to travel from the city's interior and reach its south extremities directly. It'll cut travel time by an astonishing 70% and save up to 34% of fuel. By providing a faster pathway, less fuel will be consumed and it'll cut down on carbon emissions by 1,826 tons annually. The coastal road will run on the western coast of Mumbai, connecting marine lines in the south to Kandivali in the north. Consisting of eight lanes, it covers a staggering length of 18 miles. Its first phase, which is under construction, is a six and a half mile section from the Princess Street flyover to the whirly end of Bandra Whirly Sea Link. It's projected to be used by 130,000 vehicles daily and is expected to reduce travel time between South Mumbai and the western suburbs from two hours to only 40 minutes. The estimated cost of the project is INR 3600 crore or US $1.6 billion. During the 2014 assembly elections, the BJP promised to implement the project if elected. After they came into power, work on the project started promptly afterward. 
In 2015, the state government signed an MOU with the Dutch government for technical cooperation in implementing the project. After all, the Netherlands is globally popular for taking care of the environment during construction. Construction started in late 2018 after the foundation stone for the project was laid at Amarsen's Garden. The first phase, which runs between Princess Street and the Bondra Worley Sea Link, will decrease the original travel time from 35 to 45 minutes to just under 10 minutes. As expected with any coastline project, the engineers had to create space on which the road will run. The process is known as land reclamation, which involves creating new land from oceans, seas, or lake beds by dumping large amounts of heavy rock or cement until the desired height is reached. In this case, 111 hectares of land from the sea, out of which 26 and a half hectares was used for the road and its interchanges, and 14.5 hectares to build a seawall. The remaining 70 hectares, which is roughly 60%, will be used for recreational amenities and green space. To preserve the sea for sightseeing purposes, a seven a 7-kilometer-long contiguous promenade runs parallel to the coastal road on its seaward side. It's twice the length of the Marine Drive, which is currently the city's longest promenade. Alongside, there will be other public facilities like gardens and parks, a cycling and jogging track, public toilets, an open auditorium, a butterfly park, and other recreation spaces. A total of 16 pedestrian underpasses, one every 500 meters, will provide access to the promenade. A 5.2-mile seawall will be constructed to protect the reclaimed land from erosion and infrastructure from high tides. Boulders weighing 2 to 8 tons were placed along the coastline to resist high-velocity waves. The Stormwater Department installed 16 floodgates at four locations along the coastal road. Let's talk about the most interesting part of the project, the tunnels. The coastal road includes one mile of twin tunnels that stretch up to the Priyacharinu Park. The northbound tunnel is one and a half miles long, while the southbound tunnel is slightly longer due to a slight curvature along the route. The authorities selected a tunnel for this section as they wanted to preserve the view of the Queen's Necklace and Jirakan Chow Paddy. It passes 49 feet under Jirakan Chow Paddy, 65.5 feet below Priya Darshini Park, and 236 feet under Malabar Hill and the Hanging Gardens. Digging a tunnel beneath Malabar Hills is no easy feat, but it was completed after months of perseverance. For added protection inside the tunnels, the walls are lined with fire protection sheets, which enable the concrete surface to withstand temperatures of slightly over 200 degrees Celsius. There are also cross passages for people to escape to safety in case of an emergency. This is the first time that a tunneling work of this scale is taking place in India. A giant tunnel boring machine named Mavala was deployed to dig through several tons of rocks. This TBM, weighing a whopping 28,000 tons, is the largest of its kind to be used in the country. It was shipped in 70 containers with 184 consignments from Shanghai. To put this into perspective, it took engineers six months to reassemble the monster on its own. Finally, the tunneling work began in January 2021 and was completed at the same time the next year. Mavala set a world record for the longest distance excavated in a month during excavation by a single shield TBM. 700,000 metric tons or nearly 39,000 truckloads of muck was excavated to dig the twin tunnels. Some of the muck was reused for the land reclamation while the rest was considered unsuitable and hence disposed of. The Mumbai Coastal Road isn't just for cars or motorbikes. It'll also feature state-of-the-art bus bays. Ten bus bays will be designated along the coastal road for public transport buses. People would also be able to park their cars as it includes underground parking at four locations, accommodating 1,856 vehicles in total. Initially, the project was expected to wrap up by 2022, but legal hurdles plus the pandemic pushed the deadline back further. By May 2023, 95% of land reclamation and 75% of work on the project was completed. Nevertheless, all the heavy construction work was bound to affect the coral population on Mumbai's coastline. A four-month study was carried out by the Marine Biodiversity Conservation Foundation to identify coral species living in the area. The marine biologists found 11 species of corals at eight locations. The Union Ministry granted permission to relocate two coral species from Worley to a site 656 feet away in a protected zone. A total of 329 colonies of corals were shifted out, of which 92% had survived the relocation and were healthy. If this project is successful, it could potentially change the whole landscape of Mumbai. This is a city which is in dire need of new roads and better mobility options for its people. For comparison, Mumbai has a total road network of only 1,200 miles compared to 17,400 miles in Delhi, despite being a city of immense importance. But just creating more roads will not solve the problem completely. 
It needs to utilize advanced traffic forecasting and tech-based interventions, just like Tokyo did to streamline its transport network. DACA integrated the Tokyo model to successfully remove bottlenecks from its networks. We've also created a detailed video about the upcoming Grand Paris Express and how it'll solve similar problems for the French capital. You can watch it right now by simply clicking the I button. If you liked today's video, hit the like and subscribe button. We're committed to releasing two videos each week, so your support means a lot. We'll see you in the next video.